Hello everyone, you're welcome to Jam Vibes. Guys, we know fully well that as far as these historic elections are concerned, the ANC didn't actually win the way they usually did. Guys, they had a below 50% and because of this, there need to be a coalition of governments. Guys, it's so funny that most of the leaders of other parties want Ramaphosa down. They want him to resign before they can accept to any coalition terms. Shocking enough is the fact that Ramaphosa won't resign, newsflash guys, despite the historic ANC electoral loss. Guys, there might definitely be a coalition with the DA. Make sure to stay glued and watch this video right up to the end so you get to understand exactly what is happening on ground. Before that, kindly do well to follow Jam Vibes, please. Like this video, drop a comment, and above all, share this video with all of your friends and loved ones. President Cyril Ramaphosa has firmly resolved not to tender his resignation as the leader of the ANC, despite presiding over the party's unprecedented loss of its electoral majority, a position it has maintained for three decades. Insight obtained by the Mail and Guardian reveals that, while deeply disheartened by the ANC's mega polling at barely 40%, sources close to Ramaphosa assert his belief in the imperative of preserving stability in South Africa's political landscape. They argue that, amidst the upheaval caused by voters catapulting his predecessors Umkonto Wesizwe's party to the country's third largest, there lies a pressing need for political maturity to foster stable governance. For Omaposa and his staunchest supporters within the ANC, the pathway to such stability lies in forging a collaborative alliance with the Democratic Alliance popularly abbreviated as the DA. Despite initial leanings towards the economic freedom fighters, popularly abbreviated as the EFF, as a coalition partner, recent electoral outcomes have tempered enthusiasm for this option among Houteng leadership and younger members of the ANC National Executive Committee. Instead, a growing chorus of high-ranking ANC figures is advocating for a centrist government, eschewing any overtures towards Zuma's MK party. This is so shocking. Rumblings within the ANC suggest an emerging consensus between the two major parties to collaborate, albeit with finer details yet to be ironed out. The impending question revolves around the precise form this alliance will assume, presenting the DA with an existential quandary it has long anticipated. Options range from a comprehensive coalition wherein the official opposition assumes a subordinate role to a more narrowly defined pact focusing on specific governmental functions crucial for operational efficacy. In the intrigued dance of negotiation, the DA is actually poised to leverage its cooperation on essential governmental functions in exchange for key parliamentary positions, affording it the leverage to hold the executive accountable. Such negotiations are likely to include demands for increased devolution of powers to provincial authorities, a long-standing point of contention within South Africa's political landscape. Yet, the prospect of collaboration between the ANC and the DA faces resistance from dissenting voices within the ruling party, particularly in the Eastern Cape province, while Ramaphosa asserts the pragmatic necessity of forming a coalition with the opposition, dissenters within the ANC 
one of alienating its core support base among the black working class, potentially ceding ground to competitors like the EFF and MK Party. As both parties maneuver towards a consensus, the specter of factionalism looms large within the ANC, with the MK's electoral success seen as a manifestation of long-standing internal divisions. Against this backdrop, EFF President Julius Malema has signaled a willingness to engage in coalition discussions without imposing conditions regarding Ramaphosa's leadership. Amidst this political upheaval, the presidency maintains a stoic silence, leaving the trajectory of South Africa's political future hanging in the balance. It is so much to think of, it is so much to even feel at this particular point in time, given to the fact that South Africans definitely need a better South Africa. They are actually crying so much for a better South Africa. Also, we can't actually sideline the fact that, of recent, Ramaphosa allegedly signs two bills as ANC takes a fall at polls. In a significant legislative move on Saturday, President Cyril Ramaphosa signed two new bills into law. This development coincides with a critical moment for the African National Congress as the party faces a historic decline in voter support. Preliminary results from Wednesday's election reveal that the ANC's vote tally stands at 40.21%, signaling the party's loss of its parliamentary majority for the first time since the end of a party. One of the signed bills, the Revenue Laws Amendment Bill, introduces substantial changes to retirement fund regulations. This legislation allows individuals with retirement fund plans to access their savings without needing to resign or withdraw their entire pension. Also, this was exactly stated out of the presidency and I quote, Individuals will have access to amounts in the savings components before retirement for times of financial distress, and the amounts in the retirement components are preserved until retirement. The bill is actually aimed principally in order to provide greater financial flexibility for fund members that will go as far as enabling these people to manage emergencies without compromising their long-term retirement savings. Also, it didn't just end there. President Ramaphosa as well stressed on the fact that these legal changes are highly designed to assist those in financial distress, that is actually posing an offer on safety net during tough economic times too. Ramaphosa as well added as a remark, and I quote, While we are continuing the task of growing our economy to create more opportunities for all South Africans and reduce the financial vulnerability affecting many individuals and households, the new retirement system offers protection and dignity to those who need it the most to overcome financial stress. More to this, to the Revenue Laws Amendment Bill, Ramaphosa also went as far as signing the South African Institute for Drug-Free Sport Amendment Bill. This legislation aligns South Africa's anti-doping policies with the World Anti-Doping Agency, popularly abbreviated as WADA standards. In the exact words, the presidency announced, and I quote, The legislative amendment also clarifies the powers of SAIDS. The SAIDS has a major role to play in preventing the use of prohibited substances in the South African and international sporting environment that are contrary to the principles of fair play and the health and well-being of athletes. As all these legislative changes were highly announced from the presidency, the ANC was grappling with the implication of a significant electoral setback. With the 99.51% of the vote already counted, the ANC's share of the national vote stands at a precarious 40.21%. This marks a high dramatic shift in the political landscape, challenging the ANC's long-standing dominance and potentially reshaping South Africa's political future. Right now, 
without necessarily judging i want each and every one of you to go on to the comment section and give me your honest opinions about what you think how you feel and of course what what exactly do you hope for as far as this election period is concerned in south africa i love you all from the bottom of my heart do all to take good care of yourselves see you all in our subsequent uploads and yo guys i love you